guys, this is Crimson. And this is Swan. And we'd love to know what you think of the stories. Even if it's bad. So leave us a comment. Or give us a thumbs up. Thank, Thank you. you. The Casebook of Sydney Chase. Produced and edited by Crimson McKenzie. Written and directed by Winslow Swan. And featuring... Dave Arkhipov, Annie Mick, Will Dorman, Mick Davis, Winslow Swan, and starring Crimson McKenzie as Sidney Chase. Tonight's episode, Illusions of a Thief. So, Mr. Thomas, how can I be of service to you? Is it all right to speak freely? I do apologize. This is my associate, Dr. Alex McDougall, and anything that you say to either of us will be held in strict confidence. Oh, well, if it would make you feel a little easier, I can always... No, Alex. You stay right where you are. It's all right, Dr. McDougall. I don't mind. So what can I do for you? Miss Chase, I'm the branch manager of Southern Trust, and unfortunately it appears that we've had a theft. Shouldn't you be talking with the police? It's a rather delicate situation, you see. I know who the person is. Then why do you need me? Are you familiar with our bank, Miss Chase? <laughs> I put all of my money into a safe place. But my mattress is getting a little full. Alex, do you know the bank? Oh, well, I used to. I, I transferred my accounts to First State a few months ago. So did a lot of other people. You see, Miss Chase, there are a lot of rumors about the financial stability of our branch. There was a slight panic, but everything seems to be back to normal. Until this theft, you mean. So you see why I don't go to the police. The publicity would be more damaging than the theft itself. Well, how much exactly was taken? Close to $100,000. I wouldn't exactly call that petty theft. Who do you suspect, Mr. Thomas? It's a shame, really. She's been with the bank for over 20 years. I never would have dreamed she would have done such a thing. A name. A name would be most helpful right now. Her name is Emma. Emma Danfield. What? Uh, Emma Danfield? You know her, Alex? Uh, yes, I actually do. Uh, sweet lady, always helpful. I believe she used to be in the entertainment business, but uh, uh, that was many years ago. Now, perhaps you can see why I don't go to the police. I was hoping to find and talk to her about returning the money. Discreetly, of course. Of course. Sydney Chase. Miss Chase, I'm Emma Danfield. Oh, um... Yes, I'm still working on a few leads. I take it you're not alone. Yes, that's exactly right. I need to talk to you. The sooner the better. Let me finish my meeting here. Call me back in about ten minutes. Well, Mr. Thomas, I will see what I can do about locating Emma Danfield. Thank you, Miss Chase. Whatever your fee will be, I'm sure the bank will be most appreciative. I'll see myself out. And thank you. Okay, Alex. What do you know about Emma Danfield? Was that who was on the phone? Alex, how did you... <laughs> you your voice changes slightly when you are <laughs> trying to hide something. <laughs> You've known me way too long, Mr. <laughs> McGoogle. Oh, just don't try to play poker, Sydney. Okay, so tell me about Emma. Well, she's a nice lady who was very efficient and meticulous. As I mentioned, always helpful, and as I recall, always smiling. I don't think that she ever had a bad day. She seems to be having one now. What, what was this about the entertainment business? Oh, well, we began talking one day when she told me that she used to be on the stage. An actress? No, oh, hardly. Uh, she was an assistant with a magician. So she knows how all of those tricks are done. Well, yes, as far as I know. 
She told me about a particular illusion where she had to change into more than 20 different costumes in less than two minutes. <gasps> I definitely need to speak with her. It takes me 20 minutes just to figure out what to wear in the mornings. After the magician suffered a near-fatal accident, he retired from the stage. She went to work for the bank, and, well, that was that. And now she's an accomplished thief? Oh, now you don't really believe that, do you, Sydney? I'm holding judgment on it. Sydney Chase. Is it all right to talk? Yes, my client is gone. That wouldn't happen to me, Mr. Thomas, would it? What would make you think that? It wouldn't surprise me that he'd go to you. I suppose he wants to talk me into returning the money. Well, it would be... I only took it to get his attention. I'm not sure I follow. Miss Chase, I want you to call the police. Specifically, Anthony Ferraro. <gasps> really? Are you giving yourself up? I want you to tell them to come to my townhouse at 17 Parkside. Tell them to surround the house at exactly one this afternoon. Please do this for me, Miss Chase. What did Miss Stanfield have to say? Would you believe that she wants me to call the police? Uh, so what are you going to do? <laughs> Just wait until old Ferrari hears this one. Sit down, Sydney. Now tell me, what exactly is going on? Is Peter Thomas here? Duffman is bringing him in as we speak. Aw, how is Hot Dog these days? Must you use names for everyone? Well, Ferrari, it keeps everyone straight in my head. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so I need you to surround the townhouse of an Emma Danfield at 17 Parkside. I'll get right on that, Chase. <laughs> Let me contact the chief and tell him that we have a dangerous criminal hold up. Right in the middle of town. I can hear my pension being ripped up right now. Miss Chase, what are you doing here? Hmm. Just have a seat, Mr. Thomas. I thought I had made it very clear that I did not want the police involved. Involved in what? Specifically, Mr. Thomas? Better let me handle this one, Thomas. It seems that there has been a robbery at the bank. Duffman, better take some notes. On it, Lieutenant. When did this take place? Just yesterday. Why didn't you report it then? And why did you involve Chase? Because of my winning personality and charm? I thought that perhaps, <laughs> due to the circumstances, we could avoid any unnecessary publicity. <sighs> Sydney, I'm a homicide detective. You should take your client downstairs to robbery. Oh, I'm sorry. The smell of death isn't in the air today. You should always try to broaden your horizons, Ferrari. Besides, our suspect asks for you by name. And just who is our suspect? Emma Danfield. Do you know her? Let's just say that I knew her in her work at the bank. You mean she stole the money? Apparently, she wants to turn herself in. But there are certain conditions. Of course there are. She wants her place surrounded by one o'clock this afternoon. You think that is really necessary? Why don't you let me decide what's necessary, Mr. Thomas? Ferraro here. Hello, Tony. Is everyone there? Emma, I don't need this sort of aggravation in my life. What are you doing? Didn't Miss Chase explain everything? You want us to surround your house at one o'clock. Emma, I can't afford the manpower. Do it, or the bank will never see its money again. Now look here, Miss Stanfield. I don't think you know the gravity of your situation. I don't think that you understand it, Mr. Thomas. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what anyone is talking about. Emma... If you're confessing to a crime, you need to turn yourself in. I'll give you until one o'clock, then I will personally come down and put the handcuffs on you. Let's all just calm down and actually hear her out. Thank you, Miss Chase. One o'clock, Tony. Take it or leave it. 
I think we should do what she says. Mr. Thomas, I think you should let us handle this and leave Sydney out of it. <gasps> Dorfman! I thought you were on my side. I am on your side, Sydney. But there are some things that the police are better equipped at handling. Frank is right, Sydney. We don't know what Miss Danfield may have planned. Oh, no. Emma Danfield is now my client. You and a team of wild horses couldn't drag me away. Fine, Chase. Just remember to stay out of our way. We've got the place surrounded. The townhouse is tucked in among some other buildings so the roofs connect. I've got men stationed on every rooftop and all the exits. There must be 50 officers out here. What did you do, hot dog? Call the Marines in too? <laughs> do you think all of this police presence is really necessary? I don't know what is necessary, Alex. Sydney Chase. I see that everything I asked for is now in place. Everybody is here. Now what? Put me on speaker. You are now live on CHASE. So, caller, what is your opinion? Emma, if you're not out of that place in one minute... Oh, shut up, Tony. If you will look at the bay window, you will see how serious I really am. What is she doing? It looks like she's waving something. It looks like a hundred dollar bill. What is she doing? I is that... Oh, no. No! Emma, what are you doing? She's got a lighter! <laughs> I've always wanted to burn money. This isn't funny. Emma, you have about 30 seconds. Doesn't the money burn a beautiful color? I have a lot more of it. Emma, why don't you just come out and we can talk about this? Because you would never believe me. This is the only way. The only way to do what? You got about 10 seconds left before I... Ferrari! Cool it. Give me two hours and then, and only then, will I let you inside. Ferraro, store the place. I can assure you, Mr. Thomas, that if anyone, and I do mean anyone, comes close to any door or window, you will never see the money again. Do I make myself clear? The SWAT team is ready, Lieutenant. Wait! Let... Let's just give her to the two hours. Oh, Sydney, how about a cup of coffee? Mm, you read my mind. We probably have time to go back to your place and have lunch as well. I mean, if you are cooking... <laughs> you sure have been working the gray cells. Oh, that. Yeah, I've just got a few million questions running through it. I've seen you staring at the townhouse ever since we arrived. Your mind is working, well, overtime. Care to share them with your old friend? <laughs> Alex, you're not old. Oh, standing on the street for over an hour and a half is starting to make me feel old. Okay. Well, first of all, why did Emma steal the money? <laughs> because it was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously, Alex. I checked her records. She owns that townhouse. Lived there for almost 30 years. Believe me, she definitely does not need the money. And what else did you find out? That after her magic friend retired, he set her up for life. <laughs> Apparently some of his tricks were originals. He invented them. They were patented and now she owns them all. <laughs> you know, Alex, she is single. I believe that I can do my own matchmaking. Besides, my heart belongs to you. <laughs> <laughs> and mine too. Anyway, there was no need for her to steal the money. So why did she do it? If I may make an observation, uh, Mr. Thomas was very quick to give her the time that she asked for. You noticed that, too. I did some checking on him as well. He's only been the manager for a few months. Seems he gets transferred an awful lot. 
Couldn't find out why, though. Sydney, it's almost time. Want to try and call her? Tony, I can't believe that you actually gave her the time. The SWAT team is ready, Lieutenant. A SWAT team? Don't you think that's a little extreme? She burned a $100 bill, Sydney. She may have booby-trapped the whole place. Come on, let's go! This is the last door. Her place is gorgeous. If you're in there, you'd better come out now. She has to be in there. I've talked with all the men and they never saw her come out. We're breaking the door down, Emma. Why don't you see if it's locked first? Oh, sure. She's just going to be waiting for me to simply open the... <laughs> Fifteen love. Sydney. Very funny. She's not here. She's nowhere in the house. Hold on. Is that a trunk? Maybe the money is in there. Get the bomb squad up here. She left a note, Tony. Uh, what, what does it say? In 24 hours, I will be at the bank. It will be of great interest if you all will meet me there. That's it. What kind of game is she playing? A rather amusing one. <laughs> so what do we do now? Open the trunk. Just a bunch of old clothes. Um, not quite. What is it, Alex? Well, those are actually costumes. As I recall, one of the illusions called for over 20 changes. Uh, these must be the costumes that she used. She's a pretty good magician herself. What do you mean, Sydney? She was able to make herself disappear. <laughs> driving me crazy. Um, Sydney, I've moved the rook to your castle. No, not the game, Alex. Oh, here. Checkmate. Oh, very good, Sydney. I missed that one. <sighs> that was easy. What I can't figure out is how the hell did Emma get out of a house surrounded by cops? And Alex, why are you smiling? Oh, no reason. You little <laughs> You know how she did it! Uh, uh, no, I never said that. Spill it, McGoogle. N now, now, Sydney, calm down. I only have a theory. And he wouldn't want to break the magician's code. Emma? What the heck are you doing here? And how did you get in? A good magician never reveals how a trick is done. Oh, it's good to see you again, Emma. I've missed your smiles. I've missed you too, Alex. Good thing that you left the bank when you did. Can we quit this mutual admiration society and get back to the problem at hand? Um, Emma, why don't you go to the bathroom and try to remain quiet? Hello, uh, Detective Frank Duffman of the City Police. How are you? You don't have to shout, Sydney. Can I come in? Come in? Here? Right now? If you don't mind. Um... <clears throat> oh, <sighs> detective, please. Uh, won't you come in? Uh, Sydney just delivered the coup de gras. Uh, perhaps you would like to have the next game? Alex, what are you... I don't play chess, Dr. McDougal. Oh, then how about a drink? Uh, Sydney, invite the good detective in. Sure. Come on in. So what brings you here this evening? Ferraro is chewing nails. The chief is all over him, and he's not taking it too well. And that Mr. Thomas has been ranting about suing the city. I don't think that he has a case. We had her. Right there. All we had to do was go in and get her. Tell Tony not to beat himself up that much. Besides... <laughs> That's my job. In his words, very funny. So what brought you here? Sydney, is there any chance, any chance, that Emma Danfield has contacted you tonight? I can honestly say that she is nowhere to be seen. Apparently. Look around. Now, how about that drink? Mm, no thanks, Alex. Well, I thought I would try. Just to let you know, Sydney. Tony may lose his badge over this. What? No! The commissioner gave him until tomorrow to find her. Otherwise, 
He loses everything. I just thought you would want to know. Emma, come out. Now. Sydney, I swear that I will not let that happen. Just tell me what is going on. I think it's time, Emma. <sighs> You're right, Alex. Okay, I found out about a month ago that Thomas has been stealing from the bank for a long time. Why didn't you just report it to the police? Or at the very least, the banking commission. Because he was extremely clever. He's been moving from branch to branch, skimming money here and there before moving on. I happened to stumble onto what he was doing, but he covered his tracks so well that I could never prove it. So why did you steal the money? The only thing I could think of to draw attention to the bank. And if Thomas is stealing, that would be the last thing that he would want. Wow, quite a story. I just have one question. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that you will figure out how I did it, eventually. Hello? Where are you, you old hag? And where is the money? Now be nice, Mr. Thomas. I told the police that I would be at the bank tomorrow. You should come, too. It would be of great interest to you. I have the proof. I do don't know what you think you have, but I will make damn sure that you spend the rest of your short life in prison. I take it that Mr. Thomas is not very happy? You don't think that he found out you were here, do you, Emma? I was very careful, Alex. But now that you bring it up... Alex, why don't you take Emma out the back way? Go to the Starlight Motel on Route 9. Take all the back roads. Oh, I don't think that will be necessary. Besides, I have everything worked out. The best laid plans, as they say. Okay, then we will see you in the morning. So, where is she? That's what I would like to know. Is that all you want to know, Tony? For the time being, yes. Just calm down, Ferrari. Sure, calm down. It's not you that is about to throw 20 years down the toilet. I'll have your badge for this. Why don't you calm down, Mr. Thomas? Look, we have the bank surrounded. There are at least 10 officers inside searching the entire building. <laughs> You had her house surrounded yesterday, and she managed to get away. It was a rather neat trick, don't you think? Where the hell did you come from? Never mind that. Emma Danfield, you are under arrest. Now hang on, Tony. Before you start slapping cuffs on people, you should make sure it's the right person. How did you get in, Miss Danfield? Easier than you think. Alex, will you wipe that goofy grin off your face and... <laughs> I think I got it. Mind telling me, Sydney? I know how she did it. <laughs> I know how she did it. Now, Sydney, don't gloat. <laughs> Why aren't you arresting her? I demand that you arrest her. But don't you want to know where the evidence is first? <laughs> you can't let your lawyer tell us after you tell him. Oh, I wasn't talking about that money. I was talking about the books that you've been hounding me about since last week. It seems that Mr. Thomas has been stealing for quite some time. How dare you? Oh, he dares. Keep going, Alex. You're doing great. Oh, Emma found out, kept records of what she found, and then hid them. Thomas found out and began threatening her. The only way she could get out of it was to become a thief herself. I, I haven't the foggiest idea what this is about. I haven't done anything. And where is this so-called evidence? It's almost nine o'clock. The vault should be opening in about 30 seconds. I think your watch is running slow. <laughs> oh, goodness, you're right. Forgot to whine, the silly thing. Would you mind? Oh, yes. Well, look right in there. 
There's nothing in there except the funds and a few books. Over in the corner on the lower shelf. Nothing there. Are you sure? Wait a minute. <laughs> oh my, I know how this was done. Look, you see? She put the books on the shelf, then placed a mirror in front to reflect the other part of the shelf. So it looks at first glance that nothing is there. Bravo, Emma. That's not all. Look. You will find $100,000 in cash in that little area as well. Except for a $100 bill, which I will replace. No, you will do no such thing. I'll pay it. And it's worth every penny. If these books are correct, Thomas has millions stashed away. It's not true. Why don't we let the financial wizards take a look? In the meantime, Duffman, will you escort Mr. Thomas downtown? Let's go, Mr. Thomas. It's not true. She stole the money. I've been watching her for months. No, you can't. How? How the devil did she disappear? I've got to know. How did you do it? No, damn it. I'm the branch manager. I know people. You can't do this. Woof. I thought he would never leave. Okay, Sydney. Let us in on it. Well, it is Emma's illusion. <laughs> if you think that you have it figured out, Miss Chase, by all means, put the lieutenant out of his misery. Alex gave me the clue. And I saw how she got into the bank without being noticed. How so? <sighs> Emma used to work for a magician, so she would know all of the secrets. One of the acts that she performed was a quick change routine. Remember the trunk full of clothes? I'm sure that she had a policeman's uniform in there. That was why she told us to give her two hours before coming in. What did that have to do with it? Think about it, Tony. You used to wear a uniform, standing around, looking at nothing, seeing only other uniforms. It all looks normal. Emma must have had access to the roof. She put on the uniform, waited for just the right moment, then simply stepped out and stood there. I even waved to one of the other officers. <laughs> After a bit, she slipped down to the street, took off the uniform, and simply walked away. Now I see how she got into the bank. She put the uniform back on and walked him. <laughs> I must say, Emma, Bravo! Even though I did almost lose my badge. Oh, Tony, I would never have let that happen. Nor would I. You really do care, don't you, Sydney? Of course I care, Ferrari. Who else would I have the pleasure of insulting on the police force? <laughs> you have been listening to The Casebook of Sydney Chase, produced and edited by Crimson McKenzie. Written and directed by Winslow Swan. Our stars included Annie Mick as Emma Danfield, Mick Davis as Thomas, Dave Arkhipov as Ferraro, Will Dorman as Detective Duffman, Winslow Swan as Alex, and starring Crimson McKenzie as Sidney Chase. This is your announcer, Mick Davis, inviting you for another adventure from the casebook of Sidney Chase.